Hi there, I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work in Power Systems Europe, Advanced Technology Support. On February the 5th, IBM's making a big announcement. Part of that is the Power 7 Plus machines. We're going to have a quick dip through those. There are other things in the announcement. I go and encourage you to read the actual words to find out more details. Before this announcement, we had the Power 7 Plus processor in just the 770 and the 780 models. We're now rolling it into the lower and middle half, so from the 710 to the 740 are being updated. The 750 has been updated, and if you're very quick off the mark, then you'll notice there's a new 760 model. Very exciting, we'll come to that in a minute. And when can you get your hands on this? Well, it's very quick. February the 20th for the 710 to the 740, and for the 750, 760, 15th of March. Along with these machines, we'll also get an HMC upgrade, so 777, and the firmware that will be installed with the machine as it arrives is the 770. Now here's a quick reminder of this Power 7 Plus processor that we're now getting our lower range machines. We shrunk the chip down to the 32 nanometer technology. This allowed us to get a small bump in the gigahertz rating, but also we put in some great technology that will actually save us time on the main processor. Firstly, the level 3 cache is two and a half times the original size of the Power 7. That will do very nicely for some big processes uh, running in the level 3 cache. Then we've got some accelerators to make some particular operations uh, much less compute intensive. So our active memory expansion, so we compress our memory with much lower CPU usage. Then we'll encrypt in cartography and the random number generator is a lot quicker. We can also go down to 20 L pars on a single core. The single floating point processor is double the speed. And then we have the usual slow increases in reliability and we use deeper sleep modes so we actually save power when we're idle. I'm going to be assuming that you're familiar with the previous 710 and 730 models. The vast majority of this chart is exactly the same. I've highlighted the differences in red. First of all, we have the Power 7 Plus processor, we cover that. The memory is doubling in size, we're just putting bigger DIMMs into the same slots, so no real difference there, but more memory always helps these days. Then the maximum gigahertz rating was 3.7 gigahertz, now we're going up to 4.2 gigahertz. In fact, the two machines uh, higher up the list with the maximum number of cores, we're running at 3.55 gigahertz and have jumped to 4.2, so it's quite a jump in the gigahertz rating. Moving on to the 720 and 740, again the new processor, double the memory and up to one terabyte, that's amazing in this size machine, and again the gigahertz ratings uh, have gone up to the 4.2 gigahertz maximum. So that's it, more memory, faster processors, uh, more performance, what does it all boil down to? We have this cheeky little chart here that gives us a feeling for how fast we're going. On the two top models, we got 42% uh, faster or 60% faster, depending on your particular configurations. A big jump in price performance. And it's nice and simple if we knew the previous range anyway. When we looked at this machine, the Power 7 Plus 750, we said, hang on, this is completely different to the old one. In fact, it has a lot of components that have come straight from the higher end 770 machine so we can recognize a lot of what's in here so here's the new power 7 plus 750 you'll notice apart from it being at five u instead of four there's no space for a tape drive in the front and in fact there's no pci x adapters allowed inside the machine in blue i've highlighted here that the io parts of the machine are exactly as you'd get with a 770 model and so there's quite a few changes in here, PCIe only, for example, and the number of disks has gone down to six instead of the eight. More importantly, at the top, we have the Power 7 Plus processor, as we looked at before, and we've gone from the 3.6 gigahertz rating for the machines with uh, lots of CPUs up to the 4.0 gigahertz rating, so we've got a performance bump there as well. Because it's based on the 770, all the units go in the front of the machine or in the back of the machine. There's no way that you can open the lid to access the equipment. Let's look at the even more exciting 760 machine. The big things to note in here is that this is now regarded as a mid-range machine. It goes up to 48 cores. So we have four sockets with 12 CPUs in each. It's HMC only. There's no IVM option. 
is IBM install instead of customer install. The software is regarded as middle tier. And we even have a capacity upgrade on demand option. If you have a minimum of eight calls, we can then ask for CPUs and then switch them on permanently. There is no fancy temporary trial utility or elastic capacity upgrade on demand for the CPUs. You're just allowed to switch them on as you pay for them. There's also no memory capacity upgrade on demand. If we look up here, the gigahertz rating is slightly lower than the 750 model, but because we're using the 12 core dual chip modules, we actually have 48 CPUs instead of 32, so we get quite a big performance boost. We also are allowed the two terabytes of memory. If we look at this architectural view of the machine, all of the bottom half below here is actually the same as the 770 technology, so all the I.O. is exactly the same. At the front of the machine we have no different CPU configurations and memory configurations. We're not using the fancy high bandwidth and more costly 770 CPUs and memory. We're using standard DIMMs in here. We'll notice that we have uh, four sockets in here and each of these has two power 7 plus chips. They'll either be the 4-core or the 6-core versions. This is how we get in a single socket 12 CPUs. You'll also find connected to this socket via one memory controller of one of the chips, one bank of memory, and then the other bank of memory is connected to the other CPU. We also have, compared to the original Power 7 750, more connections between the chips. We have these extra two connections in here because we're using the XYZ buses instead of the AB buses. We also see the two GX buses here. They come into the second socket inside the machine. This means we have to have at least two sockets in the machine, or four Power 7 chips, before these are activated. When we take the front cover off, we'll sort of recognize this as looking pretty much like a 770, except it's uh, 1U taller, so the, the disc bays and things are looks a little bit lower. Very common question is can we split these discs so that we can use them in different VO servers? And the answer is yes, we can. If you want a 222 split, though, there is an extra little item you have to order. Around the back you get access to all the I.O. and power. We can see here that we have the blind swap cassettes. I've got an example of that in a minute. And down in here we have the integrated multifunction card. I've got a slide on that in a minute. Otherwise it looks like uh, 770 with an extra little bit on the top here. I suspect this is an early machine. I think there's some labels missing on the back for the uh, numbering of the slots. Here's a diagram of the blind swap cassette, and surprise, surprise, it's exactly the same as the ones we currently get in the 770 and 780. These are called Generation 4. The PCI adapter goes into the um, cartridge in here, permanently connected, and it's this connect in here that connects up when you push this in the back of the machine and raise the handle to activate it. This is a picture of the memory riser card. We can see four slots at the bottom and four at the top. We have two controllers of them, so we can double up all the access of the memory. We can see the 760 does this uh, larger memory support by having the bigger DIMM size in here. Of course, as a performance guy, I'd recommend you have all the memory you can afford and every single slot filled. There's a whole set of rules for any other options. You'll have to go and check the details and check them carefully. Now on the multifunction card there are various options whether you want the optical or copper for the converged network adapters and 1 gigabit or over here 10 gigabit Ethernet adapters. Don't forget if you're using the 10 gigabit copper you need to be using CAT6A. Now if you want to later on you can purchase and uh, exchange these cards it does require a down of the machine. They don't take up the PCI slots um, if you want to use these for virtualization, then you'll need to be using a VIO server to do that. Here's a nice little graph that shows the linear progression up the ranges. Notice that the uh, difference between the 770 and 780 is that there's twice as many CPUs in that 780, so that's why it looks uh, extra high. Of course, the 795, even though it's Power 7 uh, based, it's standing at 3000 RPF, so I don't see there's an awful lot of pressure to actually upgrade that at the moment. I don't see any customers actually outgrowing a 795. 
Here's a nice chart looking back through a couple of generations. If we take the uh, the once mighty Power 5 Plus 64 core machine, it took up a whole 24 inch uh, rack, the Power 595. That came in just a little bit under 400 R per. So sitting in exactly the same space is now the Power 750. And the Power 6 uh, sitting in um, 16 uh, U in a rack. Um, came in at about 150 and now we could take two of those in a 750 and probably three of those in a 760 model. Just one little warning here, the 760 is a fantastic machine but of course the, the top end machines do have a whole load of reliability features that are not available at this uh, mid-range. This is just a bit of a, an eye chart here just to remind you, you'll have to stop the video if you want to check these things in detail. As well as our beautiful hardware, we've got to have some operating systems to run, so when the 710 to 740 become available, the latest two versions of AX will be out, along with IBM i and an update for the VO server. There will be an update for the slightly older version at a later time. Notice this says pre-install in here, so you won't be able to get the media downloaded for at that time, although you can get the updates available as soft copy. Also in time for the 750 and 760 uh, availability, we'll also have um, the slightly older version of IBM i and the physical media become available. Then a little later in March, we'll get the next two oldest versions of AIX6. And if you really want to run AX5.3, the TL12, well, there's a statement of direction. This means it actually goes into the next quarter and we're not meant to give you dates. Uh, don't forget you need the service extension or you won't be able to get hold of that. We also have Linux covered for SUSE. 11 Service Pack 2 with some fixes will be available on day 1. For the Red Hat Linux, we'll have to wait for an update before it's supported. Well, we come to an end of the Power 7 Plus machine update for the low end and the 750, 760. I've had the pleasure of using a 760 for a couple of months now in early ship. Very impressive box for its raw performance, and I think that capacity upgrade and demand for the CPUs will be very popular with users.